Hey there. Today I'm going to show you how the members of the band Sum 41 have changed. You will get to know their ages and life stories in brief. Watch this video till the end to see how all the musicians of this punk rock band looked in their youth and early career and how they look now in 2023. Enjoy watching. Canadian guitarist of Indian origin Dave Baksh joined Sum 41 in 1997, where he got the nickname Brown Sound. The young band's homemade videos and demo songs were noticed by the Island Records label, which started cooperation with the guys on the wave of success of punk rock music. In 2000 Sum 41 released the EP Half Hour of Power, which brought them their first recognition. The band became widely known after the release of their debut album All Killer No Filler, which reached number 13 on the Billboard 200 chart. The work was among the top-selling releases of 2001 in Canada and was listed as one of the most important pop-punk albums of all time. The singles Fat Lip and In Too Deep are still some of the band's most listened to songs. Dave left Sum 41 for several years to pursue his side projects Brown Brigade and The Organ Thieves. In the former group he created heavy metal with reggae elements, and in the latter he experimented with soul rock. Subscribe to the channel not to miss my new exciting videos about rock stars. Let's keep going. Steve Yach was at the origin of the formation of the band. During his school years Steve-O was fond of swimming. When he was about 12 years old, he met Derek Wibley and formed the band Casper with him, which performed covers of NoFX songs. The final lineup was made up of rival high school bands. On the 41st day of their summer vacation, the band changes their name to Sum 41. After the success of the first album and a large tour, the band releases a new record Does This Look Infected? In this work the band did not self-repeat and change their style to a heavier one. The most successful singles were Still Waiting and The Hell Song. The album received positive reviews, had good sales, and reached the top 10 of the Canadian charts, but did not repeat the success of the previous release. In 2013 Stephen left the band to spend more time with his family. Mark Spikalik started his musical journey at the age of 16, when he and his high school friends formed the band Public Display. The band recorded one release and played many shows across Ontario, but eventually broke up. In 1998 Mark became part of Sum 41, where he played bass guitar for about a year. After that Spikalik decided to focus on the band Closet Monster, which played punk rock with political and social themes. In 2002 Mark was the bassist for Avril Lavigne and helped to produce her first album Let Go. Since 2014 Spikalik and his wife have been involved in the Boho Beautiful project, where they produce material on physical and spiritual health. Jason McCaslin discovered his talent for music at the age of 14 when he began playing in the grunge band Second Opinion. He attended Ajax High School with future Sum 41 members. Jason was given the nickname Cone by Derek Wibley because he often ate ice cream in the shape of a cone at lunch. In 2004 the band visited the Democratic Republic of Congo. The guys wanted to make a documentary film about the civil war in the country for the organization War Child. During the shooting there was a firefight, and the UN peacekeeper Chuck Pelletier helped the group to evacuate from the hotel. Sum 41's third album was named after him. The concept release Chuck had a darker sound and a more serious tone, all the songs are little stories, and seamlessly transition from one to the next. The album was recorded in different genres, from heavy metal to melodic hardcore. Chuck sold 5 million copies and won the Canadian Juno Award for Best Rock Album of the Year. Tom Thacker has been interested in music for as long as he can remember. From an early age Thomas tried every musical instrument he could find, including pianos, banjos and drums. To buy his first guitar he worked as a newspaper delivery boy. In 1993 Thacker co-founded the punk rock band Gob, which brought him fame. The band released six studio albums, the most successful of which was World According to Gob. In 2007 he joined Sum 41 as a touring musician after the departure of Dave Baksh. Two years later it was announced that Tom was an official member of the band. Screaming Bloody Murder was the first album in which Thacker participated. The album hit number 31 on the Billboard 200 charts and received mixed reviews from critics. For the song Blood In My Eyes, the band received a nomination for the 2011 Grammy Award for Best Hard Rock Performance, but lost to the Foo Fighters. 
Richard Roy is the first bassist of Sum 41. Twitch participated in the creation of the band's first demo tape, which was released in 1998. I couldn't find any recent photos of him. John Marshall was the first vocalist of the band. After leaving Sum 41, he played in Closet Monster and then started his solo career as DJ Big Tuna. Frank Zummo became interested in drumming at a young age. In 2004 he became one of the three founders of Street Drum Corps. The peculiarity of the band is that they use garbage cans, buckets and barrels as drum kits for the scraping effect. The trio has recorded and released four studio albums. Frank has been in many bands as a drummer, including Dead by Sunrise, Motley Crue and Julian K. In 2015 Zummo became part of Sum 41 after the departure of Steve Yach. 13 Voices was the first album in which Frank's drumming can be heard. The work reached the second 10 of the Billboard 200 charts, had favorable reviews from critics and good sales. Derek Wibley is one of the most recognizable punk rock vocalists. Derek grew up without a father and felt an interest in different genres of music at an early age. Wibley's very first band was the powerful Young Hustlers, in which the boys made hip-hop music and covers of Beastie Boys songs. Before meeting Steve Yach, he was in the band Doors of Draven with Dave Bach. Some 41 gained worldwide fame after their first album All Killer No Filler. On their seventh studio record Order in Decline, the band tackled social and political themes. The release was produced entirely by Derek and was hailed by critics as the best version of Some 41 we've heard in years. In May 2023 the band announced that they would cease operations following the release of the album Heaven and Hell and a world tour in support of it. According to the frontman, the record will be in two parts, the first will be a return to the pop-punk sound, and the second will be the familiar heavy metal. Watch these videos to see more fascinating transformations of your favorite celebrities. See you in the next video.